have titles but i believe that's called the gargle song <laughs> yeah that was just called gargle <laughs> so that's uh that's the gargle song and this is the fine waters hour uh my name is lemon hello and uh with me in the room i've got boots rain gear hi jack chick maybe not <laughs> <laughs> never mind uh but i do have <laughs> the intern charmed <laughs> jw by Freeman. water <laughs> Hello. Uh K Thor Jensen. Thirsty and Nutshell Gulag. <laughs> oh boy water. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh so we are uh this is a little bit of a blast from the past. We are going back to uh honestly what is for me the first episode in the catalog that I can or the most uh the oldest episode in the F plus catalog that I can personally listen to. <laughs> which is episode 56. We started doing multi-track recordings. Mm. Um, uh, but we are going to be going to a site. You can go to it. Oh, hello. Five, seven, 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 thirty-seven. Thank you so much, uh, Moss Person, for your $15 donation, as well as Latte Sipper. But uh, but we are going to be going to a site that is not HTTPS secured, uh, and it is <laughs> finewaters.com. That's right. Finewaters.com is the home of Fine Waters. Um, and, uh, oh, can know, I just, uh, talk a little bit about the people that put this document together? Please. Uh, this document was put together, together, uh, by request, like two weeks ago from, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Lisbethan, uh, Dijon de Jure and the Heavenator. Uh, and I should point out that all of the material that we're covering has been, uh, vetted, uh, and sort of approved for us by those three, uh, who've put an awful lot of work into this. Um, so enormous thanks to those three. Thank you. Uh, like even like like two days ago, we were hitting them up for shit. <laughs> yep, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure Adam Bozarth will be really excited with what they might have found. But anyway, um, <laughs> so we're going to learn a little bit about a brief history. We're going to have a brief, just a brief history uh, of bottled water. Hey, the intern, do you think you could give me a brief history of bottled water, please? Absolutely. Get ready for an accent. Um, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Earth is the blue planet, and the all mark of life on Earth is water. But where did this colorless, odorless liquid first come from? Since Why? discoveries in astrophysics suggest that water is not native to Earth, but rather was imported from the edges of the solar system as ice trapped in comets. Scientists think this water was first delivered here more than 4 billion years ago during the meteor shower that gave the moon most of its craters. Earth received uh, 500 times more heat than it, this moon did. Since the planet has a greater critical mass than its satellite, Earth was also able to hold on to much of its water from the ice. <laughs> oh, it's slipping. It's slipping. <laughs> the, the, ice, <laughs> the ice was in comets, traps, noble gases, as well as cocktail of other chemicals such as silicates, carbons, and interplanetary <laughs> deuce. <laughs> oh my god, I want to paint a white stripe down my back and have you make out with me. <laughs> oh! So, these elements have likely always been present in Earth's water. Comets may, <laughs> may also have brought amino acids, the building blocks of biogenic activity to Earth. Eventually, water became one of the most important substances on Earth. 
Every stress, every stress is a new choice. I love this. <laughs> but for simulations in advance, it needed to be controlled. <laughs> <laughs> this, pro- <laughs> this process began about 10,000 years ago with the development of agriculture, which required capturing, storing, and attributing water. Ample, clean water is needed to sustain human culture as the earliest, most successful civilizations recognized after all. Humans can live a month about without food, okay, but only a week without water. <laughs> Please, someone. I'm sorry. How long can a human live without food, according that to is... you? That uh, is. Uh, uh, about a week. Okay. All right. <laughs> I All guess. Right. I don't know. Is it a month? It can't be a month. Can that it? That's like a long time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's right. Twelve. Twelve days. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix, onze days. Uh, all right, so uh, so we've learned, we, we definitely have. Don't you feel like you've learned a lot about the history of bottled water? I think we, all, we all have. Um, so now Cajun man has. <laughs> oh, we haven't even put it in a bottle yet. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so now that we've learned a little bit about bottled water, what it is, why we want to spend money on it, uh, let's get to some of the bottled water itself. Uh, this first piece of bottled water I have here is called Thunderbird Spirit Water, so that's (laughs) racist. What's the word? Um, (laughs) But, you know, it's from British Columbia, so that makes sense. Uh, it, uh, it comes in a, what looks like a Belvedere bottle, um, so, uh, so, so, Jay, Jay, I think I'd actually like you to read about Thunderbird Spirit Water, please. You, you just want to hear me massacre this, this first word. <laughs> yep. Okay. Majestic creature in a chuckle sot mythology who resides in the Thunderbird's Nest, nestled among five mountains in the rainforest surrounding Huckle. Oh, Ho-Chuckless Lake, British Columbia, Canada. It is believed that the Thunderbird flashes its eyes to create lightning and flaps its wings to deliver thunder over the lands of ho Chucklesat. In this way, the Thunderbird is said to be the guardian and protector of the tribe's sacred lake and the keeper of its pristine supply of drinking water. Okay, so okay. white people put it in a bottle. <laughs> All right. A Thunderbird spirit water comes from yeah, an Yeah, that's the diet version. <laughs> It comes from an exclusive natural artesian spring source nestled in the mountainous western shores of Vancouver Island. Thunderbird spirit water is sourced from the much-revered, naturally protected Titskin Artesian Spring. Fierce Pacific storms constantly replenish the waters that flow into the towering five mountain peaks known as Thunderbird's Nest or Titskin Poats. The earth itself filters and purifies Thunderbird spirit water as it naturally passes through underground filters, ridding itself from microbes and pollutants as it flows naturally toward the spring. What does it Fully do? Sustain- <laughs> what does it do for toxins, though? I'm sure it gets rid of those, too. You don't want those in your body. Fully sustainable and continually replenished by the rain, this sacred and protected source is found on the lands of the Uchuklasat tribe. Man, I, hope they're, I such... hope they're getting a cut of the money. <laughs> This is such bullshit. The traditional belief that everything is connected. Starting from the mountaintops of the Thunderbird's Nest and flowing as water down to the forest, the wildlife and the fish which have sustained the Achuklasat people since the beginning of time. Water has played an integral part in the tribe's culture and heritage. I think that can be said for everyone. As the tribe continues to protect and conserve the over 1,900 hectares of pristine land surrounding... (laughs) (laughs) That's a a very fancy unit of measure. Ah, the French hectare. (laughs) The the hectare. Um, Well, man, I better have to say ho chuckless over here. Anyway, we are compelled to share our story with the world by sharing the one resource which has been with us. Through time oh, immemorial. Mm, uh, oh, I didn't, yeah. yeah. The, the minerality is super low. Uh, the virginality is superior. So, hey, hey, hey. Uh, the hardness is soft. So, that's good. 
It's got a pH factor of 7.5. Uh, but Kthor, uh, you found a you found a good use for the specific lobster, haven't you? Mm. <laughs> we like to fine waters pairings. We like to steam our lobsters after killing them humanly <laughs> in salt water to keep this cold ocean taste in the dish. <laughs> the subtle flavors of such a presentation require a super low minerality water, <laughs> such as Thunderbird Spirit Water from Canada. The gold award-winning water comes from an exclusive natural Archegean spring source nestled in the mountainous western shores of Vancouver Island. That was a perfect match for the dish. <laughs> He's devolving back into a fish. <laughs> How many hectares are in that? <laughs> Four hectares per lobster. Uh, okay, so uh, so we've got a bunch of different waters uh, that we're going to learn about here uh, before we get our uh, sommelier license. Uh, I think the next one we should have here... I believe it's pronounced G Jizz Jeez? G I Z E. Oh. Guys? I'm uh, not really sure. Uh, I'll Jizz? bet it's Jizzy. Jizz. Hey, Jizz. <laughs> hey, Jizz. Um, uh, Nutshell, do you think you could uh, talk about this particular bottle of water, please? Uh, sure, but I'm, I'm scrolling. To G I Z E. G I Z E. Guys, okay. Yeah, um, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Up, guys? Well, uh, that, look forward to more of that on our. <laughs> what's that? Nine, Fourteen. Like that. <laughs> guys. Uh, let's see. Guys, am I reading it from the from the document? Yeah, from the document. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, the Micmac people revered the mineral-rich water as a fountain of youth as early. No. I find really? that statement highly dubious and would like to talk what, to an actual really? Micmac person. <laughs> uh, as a fountain of youth as early as 1500s and believed it in powerful healing properties. Why does every water have some bullshit white person Native American story behind it? <laughs> They're very expensive. In the 19th century, <laughs> visitors... Came from far and wide to bathe in the waters. I guess what? If those visitors were on Micmac land, I think you call them invaders or <laughs> colonizers. Anyway, these visitors included <laughs> members of the British aristocracy. Uh, see my, my former statement. Uh, such as the Prince of Wales, who would later go on to ascend the throne as King George V, obviously because he drank this frickin' water. Uh, now in 2010, the land is, the water has finally been filled into specially designed bottles, but only after being refined to perfection using gold filters, of course, and a process that probably mm. isn't at all horrible for the natural no, environment. No, it's ethically sourced gold, the, you know. And the occupied land on which it is produced. Land back! Um, the calcium-rich gold-filtered mineral water is one of 30 mineral waters from outside Germany and the only one from North America to have been officially certifi certifi certify. certified Hectari. as natural <laughs> mineral water. That's nice. It's it, it, Guys is not only available in its classic guys still and guys sparkling, uh -huh. but also in four sophisticated compositions. Ooh. Lemon, elderflower, raspberry, ginseng, <laughs> pear vinegar, and pineapple coconut, all of which are, of course, of course native to Micmac territory. Pear, <laughs> vinegar, water. Pear, yeah, vinegar, in. water. I could use a, just a little more vinegar in this water. <laughs> when, when I'm thirsty, I reached for sparkling guys. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to drag uh, Frank West here uh, out of his hey. dungeon for a sec. Hey, how are things going over there, Frank West? Um, So I am on mission three, which is there's zombies. Mission, mission three? Yeah, so because I'm doing the side missions because I beat the game. Oh, of course. Well, uh, yes, of course. That makes so sense. I have to beat all the side missions oh, now. Thanks, and I believe there's 18. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, very, it's very dark. That. 
Well, mission one was you have 30 minutes to find enemies hidden in this foggy, shitty map. <laughs> and um, I found like 30 of them. And then I was like, oh, there's explosives next to our house. I bet there's one in the house. And I shot them and died to explosives. <laughs> and if you think about it, dying is a lot like winning in that the experience is over. So I decided I'd beat mission one. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations on beat mission one. Then mission two was this is a terrible maze and you die in one hit, so get to the end. So the way to do it was just to randomly spam the dash constantly and grind against balls until you found the right path. <laughs> and I died about 50 times in about 10 minutes, and I did it. Well, with that... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what Mission 4 is going to be like, but maybe it's Umbop. Seven I bet it's, minutes. I bet it's going to be really good. Anyway, enjoy your shitty video game. Back into prison with you. Bye! All right, um, so uh, the next water that we have here, oh, yeah, 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 because this actually has a really good recipe paired with it. So uh, I believe this would be De, de, la, de la Beer? De la Beer? Javier. Yeah. Although I'm not a French person, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, so we're going to be uh, reading that one there. Boots, if you'll take this one, please. But actually, I need you to go to the page for just a second, um, mm -hmm. because uh, a, a lot of these uh, waters have been sourced from particular places. Um, can you tell me where this water was sourced from? Oh, we're talking about uh, De La Beer? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> the La Beer. It's, it's French for The La Beer. Uh, so uh, De La Beer... It is an ancestral custom to the northeast region of America. And right. More... No, 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 no. Oh, wait, yes, sorry. I understand that. I understand that. I totally, yes, I'm, in it. I'm into it. Okay. I'm really into it. Okay. And I know that it's from Quebec, but the thing that I want to know is, okay. what yes, is the in source? North America. What is the source? What is the source? Oh, my it's, on, it's on the actual page. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so the source of the... <laughs> wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. yep. Where does the water come from? Okay, the, uh, like all things, this water comes from maple trees. <laughs> <laughs> cool um, some people call it syrup we're smart enough to call it water to, to be fair like the sap is pretty close to water Whoa, it's gotta right, be boiled, it's gotta be boiled down a crazy amount to become syrup anyway Ooh, uh, well, aren't you fancy aren't <laughs> i canadian this guy knowing things <laughs> look at this guy look at this college boy over here <laughs> i still wouldn't call it water though anyway uh, more uh, ancestral custom in Northeast Region America, and more specifically in Quebec, Canada to Har Quebec, Canada to harvest the maple sap in the spring, while the trees go through a natural osmosis process, pumping sap up through its roots to branches during the cool nights and flowing it back down during the warmer days. A small incision is made in the sapwood to collect a fraction of the sap while it flows down. One tree will provide an average of 40 liters of sap in the six to eight weeks harvesting period from March to April. Is that? Okay. Sap is piped in food. Sap is piped in food and beverage grade hoses from the trees to make the maple to the maple farm. It is then divided into the two streams by the usage of membrane filtration technology equipment already owned by the farms. The concentrated sap, 15%, which is then reduced by boiling the maple syrup and sap water, 85%, which is typically discarded, like, because you're boiling it. <laughs> uh, oh, Matelo realized... Oh, Matelo. <laughs> oh, Matelo realized the great beauty of this wasted natural resource and developed a patent-pending process to capture, condition, and bottle the specifically water... The specialty water stemmed from maple sap. The minerals contained in Delabier are specific <laughs> to its organic nature and make for the unique gustatory sensation. Ooh. Okay. Delobier celebrates the youth of its spring-like freshness and the vivacity of its green identity. So, <laughs> like... Uh, it's just distilled water. Yeah, it the, can't possibly have any flavor. Yeah, you're just, you're just capturing boiled steam like capturing steam and condensating right is that it yeah yeah jesus christ and then splashing some of the maple back in maybe and some dirt for Ooh, the mineral yeah. <laughs> yeah. well dirt. god made it so it don't hurt <laughs> jesus the fact that it has been literally nurtured by nature over the 
previous seasons, such yeah. that each year, depending on geological, ecological, and cli- climatic uh, conditions, the new vintage of D.E. Of, oh, D. E. Lobier <laughs> will invite Epicureans to a renewed tasting experience, just like a wine. Uh, are we okay? Hashtag fine water pairings. No, well, that no, no. That, oh, that's, that's, that's a separate uh, that's thing. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Did, oh, right. Sorry. You, did, you find out, did you find a recipe with this? Hmm. Fine waters pairings. Kaiser Schmarrn is a shredded pancake souffle, which has its name from the Austrian emperor Kaiser Franz Joseph I, who was very <laughs> fond of this kind of fluffy dessert. Mm. It is not overly sweet and has a creamy texture. Only interrupted by the caramelized bits that have been Ooh. in contact with Ooh. the butter Ooh. and co- <laughs> and consumed with a tart prune compote. My choice of water would be de la bière, a water from maple trees that, that shows a very soft and neutral characteristic. This is filthier than the last. Thing we were talking about the monster girls. Well, we can have the sex umbrella protect us from all this soft and neutral water. <laughs> all right, you sissies, listen. I don't want to hear about your highfalutin water anymore because this is my this is my water. This is my water. It's called crazy water. <laughs> you want to know where it comes from? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> No, you're supposed to say to give us, give you a hell yeah, man. Uh, can it I... comes from a well in Texas. Hell yeah! What? Uh, what's the what's the place in Texas? Uh, the mineral wells, <laughs> mineral wells in Texas. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about its hardness or its vintage or its carbonation because this is not a member of the Fine Water Society. <laughs> So this is unaccredited water. Uh, crazy la- water is drawn from the land laid Brazos River sands in Mineral Wells, Texas. Starting millions of years ago, the sands were spread out on almost flat laying ancient coastal plain and in places where associate assorted winds. Uh, scattered over the sandy plains were small ponds and lakes that in drying up deposits of sulfate, chlorides, and carbonates. Really just tasty sounded stuff. Later, the sand and the lake deposits were buried beneath the layer, thick layers of clay. Uh, the overlying clay and the places in sand were impregnated with minerals uh, that left from the evaporated waters. The waters of Mineral Wells, Texas, have been making folks feel good inside and out since 1881. The legend goes like this. In late 1881, all women who suffered from dementia would sit by the well all day drinking the mineral water. <laughs> Doesn't that sound nice? That sound like a nice thing to do? That sounds very it's a, nice. It's, it's a good budget. <laughs> sit by a well drinking water people slowly began to notice that the crazy old ladies was not so crazy anymore. (laughs) Had the water from the well alleviated the ladies' crazies? (laughs) The water became known as the crazy water, and thousands of people from all over the country flocked to to this acclaimed well, uh, including a man named Ed Dismuke. Mr. Dismuke was told by his doctor that there was no remedy for his ailing stomach. But Mr. Dismuke began drinking the crazy waters, and before he knew it, he was restored to health. <laughs> it's like, like literally no snake oil salesman ever has been. In 1904, Mr. Dismuke founded the famous mineral water company selling and distributing the mineral water. Now, more than 1,000 years later, people are still drinking crazy water for its rich mineral content created by Mother Nature. <laughs> Crazy water sounds like it should have like spring sound effects and a clown horn. <laughs> there we go. It's That's after the daddy's one. insanity cure and water. All right, so that was uh, some of the product descriptions, and that's fine, and that's fine, and that's fine. But what, here we are on fine waters. We need to learn more about these uh, ludicrously expensive waters, um, which means that we need to know about the etiquette, right? So, uh, boots. Tell me, hmm. what, what is the etiquette for ice? The the etiquette for ice? 
Yeah, what's the etiquette for ice? Sure, yeah. Um, the American fascination with ice and soft drinks and water is one of the first things to strike many visitors to the United States. Even sparkling water is not spared this cruel treatment. I may not be able to change the use of ice and soft drinks, but I hope there is a chance to save bottled water from this fate. Ice is the natural enemy of bottled water. Oh, God. And soft drinks, for that matter. Before drinking, bottled water should be cooled to the proper temperature without ice. As ice made from tap water melts, it dilutes the bottled water. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh -huh. I guess, like, technically, that's sort of true. <laughs> I mean, it is, but who fucking cares? <laughs> You're diluting your water with water. But... These fucking people. Water that has been taken from its natural source, bottled with great care, and shipped halfway around the world. There is usually nothing wrong with tap water, but it just does not belong in natural bottled water. The troubles become apparent if you look closely at how the ice is actually produced, stored, and handled. For example, a bottle of water, a bottle of water is usually opened at the table, but you have no idea who handled your Whoa. ice and for how long it has been sitting around in an open container. There is, of course, a legitimate use of ice in cocktails and mixed drinks, and I know there are many people who don't want to give up the additional mouthfeel of crushing ice with their teeth. That's not why you put ice oh. in a cocktail. That's not why I like listen, my bartender snobbery is now overriding your water <laughs> snobbery. You prick. The solution to the problem is to take control of your ice's supply chain. Yes, communism now. <laughs> Sound complicated? Seize the means of ice production. <laughs> it's actually very simple. Source it yourself or use a source you trust. Uh, drink ice when you open a <laughs> when you ice, open a big old. <laughs> when you open a tray of drink ice huh, hmm. you can hmm. be sure it's the first time the ice has encountered the air since it left the clean room <laughs> in which the trays were not, in which the tray true. was filled that's not true they're not making fucking ice in an intel factory <laughs> <laughs> those those little boxes with the rubber gloves that go on the inside no, it's, just, it's, a, it's a whole breaking bad situation uh, drink ice is much too expensive to fill your cooler with but i hope it will become the standard in bars and restaurants for mixed drinks and cocktails I look forward to the time when people can select not only the vodka for their martini but also the ice Make yeah, this well, an island ice kittel, one martini with two olives, please. As a former bartender, I would fucking murder <laughs> any human being. I would, I would be a, a Jesus fucking Christ. No, no, you would, it would just be, you make this an island ice kettle, one martini with two olives. Gotcha. Smearing off ice. There you go. Wait, wait, can you say ice kittel, one martini again? Uh, make this an island ice kittel, one martini with two olives, please. Kittel, one. He was so great on SNL. Hectares. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, welcome to welcome to the F plus, where we only mispronounce fifty percent of the words. <laughs> Ooh, that's not bad odds, actually. I think that might be a little yeah. bit generous to us. <laughs> um. Uh. So now uh, that we've learned a little bit about ice, uh, we need to we need to learn about glassware. So, uh, Kathor, uh, you have a glass that you want to introduce to us, don't you? A glass that I want to introduce. Oh, you mean the I mean fine the water, water glass? glass? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it was more. <laughs> oh my God! We're over six thousand, everybody. Six thousand dollars for abortion funds. Thank you so much, to everybody. <laughs> the note oh, yeah. in the latest one says abolish ice. <laughs> 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 abolish ice. <laughs> that was until I get it right. It was more than 15 years ago, and I just had to stop drinking alcohol. We had a chef's table in a leading Los Angeles restaurant, and the sommelier just picked a great burgundy for us. Oh, boy. He poured the wine into hand-blown Riedel sommelier glasses, oh. and we were about to toast. Oh. Since I was not drinking wine but water, I had an ugly, thick-walled tumbler. 
suited for a picnic, but not for an elegant table. I hope you broke then, it over the waiter's head. Then came the moment to toast, and I heard the awful sound of the delicate glasses hitting my ugly, thick-walled tumbler. <laughs> it was not oh, pretty. Oh my god. And it made me feel like a second-class citizen on the table. <laughs> At this moment, I decided that I need to change not only the perception of premium bottled water, but also establish a bottled water etiquette you know, and you design a proper and proud dedicated water glass. You could have just said, give me water in a wine glass. Like, you know that that was an option, right? What part of dedicated water glass don't you understand? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. This is an important quest. After working for some time on the water glass project, <laughs> we were able to... It's, it's, like, be it's late, like the Manhattan late coming home project. from work. Yeah, we're, we're making great progress in the water glass project, and I just can't get out of here in time. The smartest scientists in the nation all fucking each other. <laughs> no, but the glasses have, like, holes in the bottom, and they're looking at them quick. What's wrong? doing wrong after working for some time on the water glass project we were able to introduce a dedicated high-end water glass to the world at the fine water summit and pavilion yep. in shanghai 2000. that's right that's right that's right that's a convention that's so mm -hmm. good sure it's so good the water people go to it okay <laughs> i'm not i'm not ready for this i'm gonna say the name of us of a thing. Rogaska Slatina is a small town in eastern Slovenia famous for its curative wait a minute oh my god okay this actually is relevant famous for its curative mineral water spas and crystal glass known since Roman times the first written records of the magnesium rich naturally sparking mineral waters are from 1141 and it has been a known spa town ever since most uh, recently, it's pausing, using... pausing for pausing for just a quick sec. Mm -hmm. I'm being told I should be checking on Frank West. Oh, uh, yeah. Frank, what's going on? Frank, check. Uh, do you? I just realized I remembered that there are selectable costumes. Actually, do you? <laughs> do you think we should put that to the chat to vote on what costume I should use? Oh well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you show me the? Can you show me the costume? Yeah, I need to go back to my menu real quick. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a decent delay, so it'll be a little longer than. Uh, so. How many? How many costumes are there? There are five costumes other than the default. Okay, and and are they all varying shades of sexy? Uh, yes. <laughs> so here's the regular. Shocking. Here's special costume one, which I think is like a leatherier witch. Special costume two, definitely the schoolgirl, strong option. Okay, okay, special sure. Costume three, hot secretary, I guess. <laughs> special costume four, uh, if she looks injured or maybe like a ninja from Naruto. And special costume five, she looks like a sexu a sexualized tertiary character from a Final Fantasy game. Oh wow! Okay, so, so... those are your, those are your options. Okay, that was a lot, and I'm seeing I'm now the the stream is just now caught up, so I am mm -hmm. seeing I am seeing your uh, God, I, I think three, I think three, well, three, no, 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 yeah, three has three has the best problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, five is incredible though. Five is pretty incredible. Oh, uh, wow. Five is... I'm voting for five. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I feel like... Well, yeah, no, yeah, chat's all about five. Yeah, yeah chat's chat, all chat about is five. all about five. Five, five has strong five. water energy. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. <laughs> all right, thanks, Frank. We got to get back to our glass now. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <sighs> One moment. Mm, okay. Are you drinking from your water glass? <laughs> wow. That's a noisy water glass. <laughs> I don't like it, no, sir. The fine water glass is actually a sippy cup. Ooh, we just came back, came back just in time for another 69 jizz. <laughs> Having a water source and people wanting to take the curative waters home requires bottles. And in 1665, the process of creating glass bottles was established in Rogoska. Today, Steklarna Rogoska, Rogoska Glassworks, is one of the leading producers of crystal stemware in the world with a unique and deep connection to mineral water. Rogoska Glassworks immediately understood my concept of introducing a series of dedicated water glasses. Charge money, the idiots! Okay. 
<laughs> and within a couple of months, we were able to launch the first glass in Shanghai as a partnership between Fine Waters and Rogoska Glassworks. The first glass introduced is the icon of this series Ooh. and not designed for mass production or the use in hotels and restaurants. Of course this not. glass is special. And for the serious water connoisseur and a person who is not shy of communicating his her choice of beverage. Hot water, <laughs> and I will not apologize. <laughs> and you take it like one of those Crown Royal velvet bags, and you take your water glass out of it and put it on the table. Bring it to other people's houses. <laughs> if tap water touches this, you're fucking done. <laughs> Uh, Rogoska Glassworks and Fine Waters will continue to innovate the space by introducing dedicated water glasses for still and sparkling waters, as well as for the Horeca category, which, this is an acronym, chat, the acronym is H-O-R-E-C-A, what does that stand for? Help me out. I'll find out. Using a dedicated water glass elevates the consumption of water from pure hydration to an epicurean experience. It finally does justice to the many brands of premium bottled waters. In a world of pure hydration. (laughs) Sourced with such care from all over the world. Premium waters can now be enjoyed in a premium glass. And due to its lightness, the fine waters glass by Rogoska will allow you to sense the weight of the water and make an emotional connection. I can, to the I can sense of the, the water. weight of any water in any glass. Like I can sense it, it no matter what I can pick it up. Like lit, it's, this isn't a pint glass. I can feel that there's water in there. I can tell. <laughs> but in an Epicurean context, no. cheers. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've learned so much about this glass, would you like to see it? Would you like to see it? Hmm. Yeah, there you go. Okay, oh. great. So here you go. There it's, it is. It's a yep. t- it's a tumbler with a stem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, that's yeah. truly an icon. Wow. The project is concluded. <laughs> They've wow. done it, everybody. <laughs> They've cracked the code. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, so uh, we're getting uh, we're getting pretty deep in here. So uh, we need to talk a little bit about uh, water pairings. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about water pairings here. So if you match water with food, right? If you match water with food, then you need to use the fine waters balance to establish a progression in multiple course meals, which is a word, multiple course meals. So like, and to match then contrast the water with the mouthfeel of the mouthfeel of the dish. So each course gets its own water with it. One of the prime joys of matching water and food and one of the true marks of water connoisseurship is changing waters for each course, developing a progression of waters to guide you through the meal. Drinking a different water for each course highlights the subtle differences and the progression adds enormously to the dining experience. If your favorite restaurant does not offer more than one water, ask them to consider adding more options! Can you imagine eating dinner with someone in real life who takes away your water and brings back a different kind of water because it's the next course? I'm yes, just... and it makes me hurt to think how much you'd be charged for it, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many TV shows at this point that are like, hey, will people put up with this ludicrous bullshit? I guess that's what I would assume was going on. <laughs> Uh, so then there's intangibles, right? Beyond the pure flavor considerations, you should also take intangible qualities like presentation and the water story into account when choosing your bottled water. The bottle plays an important role in the overall perception of the water. Huh? Yeah. Uh Interesting. Almost like it's a marketing exercise. Since water has no notable visible characteristics on its own, the bottle has a remarkable impact on perceived value. I don't know. That really depends on where you get the water from. (laughs) Spoiling our entire house of cards here. Matching the presentation to the venue or event may have no influence on the actual taste, as any blind water tasting will tell you. But doing so can significantly enhance the experience or be detrimental to it. Uh, every good sommelier tells you a little story about the wine he or she is pouring. Does it make the wine taste better? No. 
does it make the wine feel more special and unique? Absolutely. This is the same. This the same is true for water. Does it mean you're going to get charged way more for it? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this, uh, the sharing the story of the water and the source of its origin, vintage, and the location and circumstances of its bottling can contribute significantly uh, to the overall experience. Um, so then we have some rules about bottled water and food. Um, but I want to, uh, before we get into, because I've got a, a few profiles of uh, people that we all are going to aspire to be. But before we get into that. I'd just like to, I'd just like to quickly point out that Jimmy Franks is now, uh, appears to be doing uh, uh, just propaganda from the, wa the bottled water lobbies, <laughs> lo lobbyists. <laughs> De lobbyer. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Water, the backbone of our economy since 1987. <laughs> Before that, I don't know what it was. Um, uh, so, yeah, so there's uh, some flavors uh, of water that I want to go through. So, J.W. Um, Friedman, uh, what would you call a light water? Oh, geez. Okay, hang on a second. <laughs> uh, well, the recommended serving temperature is 58 degrees Fahrenheit, 14 degrees Celsius. Carbonation, 2.5 to 5 milligrams per liter. These waters draw attention. Many people who claim they don't like sparkling water at all love light sparkling waters. If you are serving a dish with a subtle mouthfeel, for example, a perfectly pan-seared fish, a light sparkling water would be a perfect choice. It gives texture, but does not overpower the presentation. Okay, and then uh, intern, uh, what would you say it was a good effervescent water uh, profile? Mm, mm, mm. I see classic. Ah, oh, there we go. Recommended serving temperature, 56 degrees Fahrenheit, 13 degrees Celsius, carbonation 0 to 2.5 milligrams per liter. Effervescent waters are an epicurean surprise to many. These sophisticated waters... What? I will repeat. Effervescent waters are an epicurean surprise surprised these sophisticated waters with the smallest possible bubbles straddle a line between still and light sparkling waters in some instances these waters lose their sparkle very quickly and some are almost still any naturally carbonated waters such as boudoir what will er and farella <laughs> fall into this <laughs> Fall into this category. Drinking water that is almost flat but has a hint of carbonation and thus a hint of mouthfeel offers a new sensation to many people. Use this element of surprise to contrast or support a dish with a water pairing. <laughs> surprise! surprise! It's almost flat sparkling water. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> This is a great water to use when you jump out and scare somebody. <laughs> I would be careful about... And, and, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, I would be medically careful because you could potentially harm a person over 50 if you surprise them with water of a certain type. Oh, yeah. Should have it with Coke and Pop Rocks. It's real bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, so uh, as 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 Kathor found out a little bit earlier, uh, there is uh, conventions, bottled uh, water conventions that are hosted all over the world. Uh, they are expensive, <laughs> um, and uh, it's time for us to get our certification. Now, of course, we could just get a simple, uh, we could get a simple uh, low price uh, fine water certification for $125, uh, but that's not what we're going to do because we want to get the $475 water service certification. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so uh, for so uh, I think you just ask me, why don't you just ask me, what do you get for $475? Uh, what do I get for $475? A bunch of PDFs, all right, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
the PDFs are actually on the site without paying. So you're going to get $475. You're going to get a certification uh, from some talented uh, water sommeliers. And we're going to read the profiles of, uh, of I think, all of them. So, uh, Michelle, if you'll start us off with the profile of water sommelier Martin Rees. Right. Well, Martin Rees began his renowned career in his native Germany. Today, he is a water tasting educator, acclaimed author, water sommelier mm -hmm. at Patina Restaurant Group in Los Angeles, and the world's foremost water sommelier, if he does say so himself. <laughs> Reese began his culinary journey as an apprentice at the Relais and Chateau Hotel Stade Hamburg in the city of Silt, uh, in the island of Silt in northern Germany. After completion of a multi-year training program, having completely lost his mind, he continued <laughs> to work in various positions in the culinary industry in Hamburg before traveling across the pond <laughs> to the United <laughs> States. Mm, mm, very good, very good indeed. In 2010, Martin Rees received a certification as a mineral water sommelier from the German Mineral Water Trade Association. <laughs> Which he probably started himself. Uh, I think that's a guarantee. <laughs> that's Reese's, a guarantee. <laughs> Rees's expert knowledge of water has led to appearances on television and radio programs throughout Europe, South America, and Asia with the German press referring to him as the country's foremost water sommelier. It's a catchy nickname. In 2009, he also co-authored the critically acclaimed book Die Welt des Wasser, The World of Water, which is considered the leading European book on the subject. In 2013, Reese unveiled his signature water program at Ray's and Stark Bar at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and in 2014 at the Patina Restaurant and the Walt Disney Concert Hall. In summer 2014, he launched the Water 101 class where Reese educates students on the unique qualities and characteristics of mineral water. Since his return to the U.S., Reese has appeared on numerous national media outlets, including Good Morning America, CNN, The New York Times, Bon Appetit, Los Angeles Times, NPR, BuzzFeed, and Conan O'Brien. I want to say that uh, Martin hyphen Reese has changed since I first looked at his website, uh, because when I first looked at his website, the first thing that was on there uh, was Martin Reese has served water to Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <boy. laughs> the most important fact that he wanted you to know um, I will along say, with like eight different people that work at fat burger in la <laughs> uh i want to say that the 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 lyrics to the uh the song for this hour were uh were taken entirely from uh a, a review on amazon for uh martin reese's book <laughs> what is his book called uh oh i forget the world yeah. of water yeah the world of water uh, it was somebody just talking about how they, they went to China and got bottled water, and it was the best water they'd ever had. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, coming close to the end here, uh, so and I think I want to get to them both. So, Jake, do you think you can do Hanio Kim, please? Sure. Um, Hanio Kim was born in Answang, Gyeonggi Province in South Korea. It was only natural to have interest. Pardon me. It was only natural to have interest in beverages because his father was running a beverage distribution company. He studied in food uh -huh. service man management at Gyeonggi University. He met Doctor Professor. <laughs> sorry, Professor Doctor J. Young Ko, and learned about wine, water, and tea. In 2013, Kim realized that great potential and possibility of water market in future during the vacation in France and Canada. After traveling around the world, he focused on studying water. Kim studied to receive certification as a water sommelier from Kisa, Korea International Sommelier uh, or Association, and worked as a teaching assistant at the same time. Kim began his career as a water sommelier at Water Bar Shinsuke Clever. Department Store in Gangnam, Seoul. While he was working at the Water Bar, he won the water sommelier comment. Ah, I can't say that word anymore. <laughs> yeah. like it's, uh, my, my brain is degrading. His competition in 2014, it was designated as a national water guy of Korea. After becoming a national water dude, he has appeared on numerous magazines and national media outlets, including Singles, Korea Times, The Celebrities, Buy Magazine, Remy De, Modu TV, and Radio. Since 2016, yes, dude. Since 2016, he has been writing a weekly weekly column at 
Water Guy Times, and he is currently a jury at Korea Bottled Water Tasting Super Award. Dude. With his knowledge of water, he educates people on water and mentions teenagers to let them know about their job as a water sommelier. And he is a main newsreader on a sommelier news program in sommelier what? TV. <laughs> a sommelier news program. <laughs> a sommelier TV channel. And then they're like, welcome to the TV channel, sommelier. And then there's sommelier news. <laughs> Water, it's there. Oh. And then, and then finally, uh, intern, if you will take uh, Goots Graber, please. <laughs> Goots Graber was raised by a German father in Taiwanese mother. No, I can't do it. All right, Goots <laughs> Graber was raised by a German father in Taiwanese mother during the eighties and nineties in Beijing, where he witnessed China's economic reform. He recalls how his family slowly switched from drinking water, distilled water, to local imported bottled water, to installing some filtration units. And during the summer holidays, he would drink from the various mineral-rich public fountains located in the old German spa tradition. Now married again, living in Beijing, Goats has consulted Chinese firms from Jilin's Mineral Water Reserve, the Chang Changbai Mountains, for the past five years. As a water sommelier, he hopes to contribute to the growing success of the Chinese drinking water culture. <laughs> Period. Uh, <goats>. Period. Period. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think we need to go into what we learned from all this because like, dumb shit's going to spend money on dumb I shit. I learned it's good to stay hydrated. Everybody, have a glass of water. Hydrate. Take good care of yourself. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> and if I have water? <laughs> we, got a, we got a donation from a paper Jensen. Oh, thanks for the donation, Kathar Jensen. I found that donation quenching. <laughs> it was as delicious to produce as it was to consume. Uh, that was uh, hour seven. When we come back into hour eight, oh my god, yep. it is the rat pad. <laughs> there's nothing I can even do to tease the rat pad because fuck, that is coming up next. Settle in, Bunny Bread's in charge. Settle in, Bunny Bread. <laughs> Not even sharing the mic. He's got them. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Uh, drink some water, uh, but you know, make sure it's the good shit. <laughs>